Hey wood turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today, I went out to the metal shop and got my belt sander. This is what I use to dress off tools and shape up stuff and clean up wells and all. It's, it's seen a couple of fires, a couple of floods. Uh, been pretty much abused for about the last 15 years, but still a good piece of equipment. It's no Delta. It's a 4x36 with an 8 inch wheel. Now here's the deal. This sells, I think at Harbor Freight for about $79. At Home Depot for about $109. Grizzly for $119. Ford Cable for $129. No magic to them folks. They got a little dinky motor down in there. And I mean dinky. And they come with this little tool rest that is mounted up here to put wood against. And this is, I don't know, a disc sander, eight inches wide. Come on. Um, but what I'm going to do today is show you how a simple little modification to the tool rest lets me sharpen tools just like the Sorby Excalibur. You've seen that rig? Man, it is nice. But you, with simple modification, can sharpen your tools right here on a much less expensive piece of equipment and get pretty good results. And good enough to wear you're going to really wonder why they get so much money for that other stuff. But that's good stuff. That really is. It's fine built equipment. If you can handle the step. But I can't handle that step. So, I came up with this. A little bit of housekeeping. Hold on, hold on. Before we get into the, the project today, I have to thank you every one of you for your support and your loyalty your nice notes and my problems with the R2 cutters I'm proud to say man I feel so good because today I am caught up every order is shipped there is nothing pending right now wait 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 there's nothing pending that means you guys aren't buying anything whoa wait ah place an order I gotta get busy Okay? But thanks for the notes. Really do appreciate it. Another thing. Sarge called me today. Some of you Blackhawk team guys, team Blackhawk guys, took kits and made contacts and... What? You want a vacation? What? Come on, man. We need those pen kits back. We got young men and women serving our country who are relying on us, team Blackhawk and the Freedom Pen Project, to bring them a little bit of something from home. That's what it's all about, guys. Showing these young men and women that we're proud of them. We support them. We're there. We are the Americans behind them. We're not those other guys that are trying to demoralize them and take away their benefits and hurt them. Hey, do you know it actually kills me to think that the young men and women that are protecting my freedom live almost on a poverty level almost on a, I have a young son-in-law who's active duty I know what he gets paid it's only because he's got a big heart and he's loyal is that he can stick with it and my daughter helps but not for what they go through and what they put up there's something wrong there and we can help we can really really help Team Blackhawk turn a freedom pen today get a hold of the Sarge get on a team and make a difference. Those real Americans are counting on you. That wasn't a slam because I know you're a real American too. Now, project, you want to build this thing? You want to get going? You want to make it look really cool? You want to do it just like the Sorby Excalibur? Excalibur. Nah. I don't have any sound effects for that. So all I got to say is, watch. I'm like Tim Taylor. I didn't just go for the belt sander. 
This is my 20, my 4 inch by 36 by 8 inch Delta, and it's a felt disc sander by Delta. Looks pretty rough, doesn't it? Yeah, it's been through a flood, fire, a couple of hurricanes, and it's still clicking along. It's not the prettiest thing around, but it works. Now, how do we do gouges on this? Well, I modified this block they give you in the back, this stop. I modified this by adding a tab on it that the, gout, the, the, uh, the jig goes into, the Black Hawk sharpening jig goes into this. And it gives you a really, really good grind couple other notes. This is a 120 grit belt. Um, it, I found 120 to work really well. I can't find anything finer in my na neighborhood right now. Um, now, this port down here. See that port? That's where sawdust comes out of. If you've been using this for wood and that's got sawdust in it, you're going to end up with the fire I told you about that it lived through. Yeah, I, I was mixing up and I went ahead and dressed off something one day and some real soft flop lolly white pine shavings were in here and they started burning. Hey, I know what to do. I scooped them out. Right onto the dry leaves outside in the back of the metal shop. And a few minutes later, uh, let's just say the scouts are right. You can build a big fire start with a little fire. Yeah. But it survived. It survived. It looks pretty good. Gotta chop the cord off and do this and do that, but we're back with it. Now, we are using a little bit of math here to make this happen. I'm going to use my, this is my Black Hawk jig. I will sell this separate if you want to build one of these, but I got a better deal than that, okay? The jig is on there with two inches sticking out over here. That's always the math on this Ellsworth type jig. Now, this is a, a, a glazer gouge. It's a deep V. Jerry Glazer makes them. they really, really nice. It's this, uh, this commemorative set by uh, AAW I got a couple of years ago. The math is that when I put it here and roll the cutter around, I'm going to be the same as I was with my 247. Now, what is the math? Okay, I am four and one quarters inches away from the face. I just took this, this brace, added a piece and put a hole in it. Now, this is the same as a Grizzly, a port of cable, the thing they sell at Harbor Freight, the one they have at the discount center. It's a four by 36. This will work. Now, show you what we're going to do. Crank it up. The beauty is, this is so much less aggressive than your grinding wheel that you re remove a minimum amount of material with a 120 grit belt. I'm going to try to get you in and let you take a look at this. You see that? How nice that is. I'm still trying to figure out, it's like looking in the mirror and scratching your nose. It's not exactly what the other grind was, but it's a good grind. It's balanced, there's no dips, waves, and that's a really good grind. Now I could work a little bit more and bring the eagle beak out some. What I mean is the eagle beak being this, just bring this out a little bit if I need to. But this would be a great bowl gouge. Now, if I want to relieve the back edge, I can just move my cutter up. get where I need to be and take some of that back edge off. I, I would do it more, but this is hard. Just like 
chewing gum and roller skating at the same time. Okay. I think you got the gas, the, the grip. Okay. Now, this is sanding with a belt sander. Using this little rig, this little platform. I think it came out pretty good. I was sharp enough because I need to do a little uh, little something on an ornamental piece because I got Lazilla cranked up here on the other side. I am working on developing developing these little platforms. The best I can do right now is if I had your platform, I could add a tab and put the pockets in it. That's the best I can do right now because I don't have a source for these little tabs. This is what I'm talking about. There's a, a little thing here and it comes off of yours just like it comes off mine. See this bracket? So if you were to send me yours, I'd add this piece of two inch flat bar and put a hole at four and a quarter. You put it back on. You can still do wood. <laughs> right there. Just let it butt into it. Didn't change anything. Still do wood. Now, we talked about shaping other tools. Let's just stop at about a 45 here. I'm going to go over and get my skew. This is my skew. And I want to regress my skew. hear it. You end up with probably the finest edge you will ever work with on your skew. Look at that. Look at that edge. Now you take your diamond stone You stand it up and you take your diamond stone and you lap it off. You just dress it off. And you end up with a convex face on your skew that's easier to control because you have the bevel right where you need it at all the time. And it acts more like a block plane than an axe. Once you've done it, and you understand how to just twist your wrist, not lift your arm, just twist your wrist to make things happen, you'll really like it. So, well, there we have it. Took something that's, right now I consider kind of shop junk, and made a little something out of it, and you can sharpen some tools on it. Now, I'll work up what it would take me to do that little flat bar, and I'll put it on my website someplace if you're interested. But tell you what, if you're interested in having me do it, email me at this address and tell me, just so I know. I do like this. I'm not doing any skew work right now. But that could change. Thanks for coming by the shop today. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and now that I have really, really sharp tools, I'm going to get over here and start making shavings. You take care now. Good seeing you. Get away from the computer and go make shavings.